Hi everyone, it's Cindy. It is Sunday, May 17th, and I'm back for a sit and stitch with me. Uh, quite a few people have requested that, so I don't mind doing that. It is Sunday morning, almost afternoon. And the piece that I'm working on is Love, Peace, and Purpose by Plum Street Samplers. It's a really pretty uh, pattern. This I purchased in Pennsylvania. And here are all the beautiful uh, specialty threads. And I started this on Monday. And that's what I got done so far. It's a very pretty pattern. This one I am stitching by hand. And I do both. I stitch in hand and I stitch in a lap in a lap stand so I know I'm not normal um, but <laughs> that's me and I do both now the first thing I'm going to show you though is somebody had asked me to demonstrate the pin stitch so I'm going to do it the best I can and I, I've got the biggest fabric I could find so what you do is there's an X and you're going to do you skip over one and in the middle is where you start your pin stitch. So you start it in the middle and you go down. And then you come up in the hole right next to it, right here. Let's see if you could see that. You see the hole, you go right next to it. We'll pull that up. And you're going to go back down in the hole that you started in. You're going to go back down in that hole. So you got the first leg. Then you're going to go on the other side and do the same thing. You're going to come up right on the other side. And you're going to go back down that same middle hole. go down right there then you're gonna go from your bottom left is what I do bottom left you're gonna come up and you're gonna make your X you're gonna go right above that so this in the middle is gonna be in your middle you're gonna snip it really close Let's see if I can get this you're going to snip it really close and you're not going to see it. Snip it. If there's any thread, you just bring it down. So you're going to go back through that top hole right there. And you're just making your X that. There is your X. That is how you do your pin stitch. I hope that was helpful and you could see it. It's very hard to do on a camera. <laughs> and the holes, there's, I got the biggest piece I had. So I hope that helps you. That That is a pin stitch. And I do need this color <laughs> to do my piece. I hope everybody is having a good weekend. Uh, it's beautiful here where I live. Um, it's It was in the 80s yesterday. And I'm just going back underneath to start this. It was in the 80s yes, yesterday. It'll be in the 80s again today. Give me one second. So the weather's been really nice. I did uh, do my walk last night down at the trail, and there was no one really there at night. It was pretty empty. Um, it was beautiful weather. The restaurants in Virginia started opening up with just outdoor dining. So they've been sitting people outside to dine and you have to be six feet apart, you know, all that good stuff. But um, they did start opening up. I went to Hobby Lobby 
on um, Friday night after work. And it was really empty. There was really not that many people there, which was pretty surprising for me. Uh, they only had, of course, one cashier. So the store was pretty empty, um, which really, it was kind of surprising for me, but I think a lot of people don't know that the stores are open in the area that I live in. So slowly but surely, they're starting to open things back up, which is good. Uh, they opened the trail that I woke up back up, and that was uh, earlier during the week. So I was excited about that. I get to walk my trail that's only a couple of minutes from my house every day. And that, that's been good for me. Uh, it's still strange. I don't know. Every day I wake up and I feel like I'm in the Twilight Zone. Do you ever, did you ever watch The Twilight Zone with Rod Sterling? I really feel like we're in the Twilight Zone. I just, there's no other way for me to describe it. Um, it's just different, and I don't think it's ever going to go back to the way it was uh, before. I hope it does, but I don't think it's going to, um, especially with the mandated six feet apart and things like that. So it is a little bit of a transition, I guess, for all of us. But I had a great surprise today. Uh, Amy from Amy Loves Toads went to a wedding in Tennessee. And I'm like, I wish I could see you, you know. And, and on her way home, she had to drive uh, through my area. So she did stop by and I showed her my yard and showed her the, you know, area. She, it really was literally just five minutes because she was driving home from a wedding. And... I got to talk to her and hug her. That is the first person I hugged since January. And that is just sad. <laughs> like, I don't live, like my family does not live here. And I don't know really that many people in the area. And you really can't go out and go anywhere and do anything. But. Yeah, how weird is that? When I thought about it, I'm like, I haven't hugged anybody since January. And she was laughing and <laughs> it was kind of funny. It was so good to see her and her husband, her son and, and her dogs were in the, in the, the vehicle waiting. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. But Amy, thank you so much for stopping by. That That's my sister. That's my stitching sister, my adopted sister. Uh, so it was good just to see her and like I said, hug another person, and that's that's the day and age we live in now, and it's just, it's so hard for me to wrap my brain around still, but now I go out every day. I go to work. You know, I'm, I'm one of the few that, you know, I still go to an office every day, but the other two people I work with work from home. Uh, they have kids. There's no daycare. The daycares are closed, and I'm the only one working in the office, so... And where I work, it's like on Main Street in town, and everything is closed. There's nothing open, so it's like a ghost town. And it really, it is. It's like the Twilight Zone. You can never dream this stuff up. <laughs> but like I said, hopefully things will start uh, opening back up, and, you know, the small businesses could start, you know, opening their doors. I know a lot of small businesses are not going to make it with all the time that it was shut down and um that's a really sad sad part of it but um I'm hoping to see a lot of them open back up and you know do business and things like that um just amazes me that there's nothing open it's eerie when you go into town every day and there's there's no one there but like you <laughs> so it's kind of strange, but these are the times that we live in. And, you know, a couple of, um, a couple of businesses, you know, they have signs up that they are going to start 
to open back up. I did go to, where did I go yesterday? Oh, I went to Target. And it's a big strip mall. It's a shopping center. Uh, like TJ Maxx was still closed. Ross Boss was still closed. Um, Burks was open. It was one of the uh, few other stores that was open. So I was able to go in and actually buy a denim skirt and, and a top. And Target is not my favorite place to be. Um, and in all these places... The, the fitting rooms are closed, so you can't try anything on, and nothing is made the same anymore. Like, you need to always try everything on, because nothing is made for a specific size. So I had to guess on what I was buying, and I was really lucky. They they did fit. Uh, I, was, I was just, like, I, you can size things up, but sometimes things are just not made right anymore. I was really lucky. Uh, but a lot of those stores said they would be clo they would be opening the end of May. So I thought that was weird. Like some of them were open and some of them were closed. Books a Million was open. Um, I don't know. It's just I don't understand how some are open and some are closed. I don't understand how Walmart and Target were allowed to stay open, but the other stores were not. It's the same thing. It's the same people. Um, I just, I don't get it. It's, like I said, it's the Twilight Zone for me. <laughs> so I have been watching uh, some some of the uh, Stitch Mania videos, and some of them, I thought there would be a whole lot more coming out, but I only subscribe to so many people, and I don't do Stitch Mania myself, so I totally understand. But the... The people I've been watching, like, they've been doing a lot of um, projects, and they, they got a lot of stuff done. Uh, Christine from Calico, uh, she's doing the small Mill Hill bead kits. They are so cute. I'll leave a link below if you haven't seen them. She's she's finished. She's doing a lot of them through Stitch Mania, and they're so cute. It makes you want to just stitch them. Your, like, everything we see, we're like, oh, I want to stitch that, too. But they came out really cute. I'll leave a, a link below for hers. And I thought that was a, a, a interesting stitch mania. She's doing these little uh, Mill Hill bead kits. And uh, they're super cute. I think uh, the tomato came out really good. She did. She did a pizza. I want the pizza because I love pizza. <laughs> and it just made me want New York pizza. There's no good pizza here. <laughs> but uh, it's super cute. I'll leave a link below there. Uh, some people are just doing one project through Mania, which I think is good. I know Mary Rose from Stitch Bliss Corner did one um, Dimensions kit. She's already finished it. It's amazing how much stitching she, she gets done. So she started and she finished her project already, which I'm like, oh my gosh, like how did like she has, she's retired. She's got time to do it. Like I don't have that kind of time. Um, and I don't, there was a couple of days last week I, I didn't even stitch. You know, I go, I'd rather walk four or five miles than sit and stitch when it's nice out like this. I do like being outdoors and I think it's good in this time to be outdoors walking around and then keep your body moving and getting some fresh air and hearing the birds sing and seeing ducks walk by. Uh, all those things definitely keep keep me busy and keep me entertained uh, when I'm out and about. I did work on tulips. Uh, that's the piece that I did on my last sit and stitch, and that's by Rosewood Manor. And I was working on it last night, and I was doing, you know, the letters, like tulips, T-U, and on the pattern, like, the bottom of the letter was missing. Like, I, I was looking, because it's like uh, five pages, the pattern, and it was, it really was missing. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's something wrong with the pattern. <laughs> so of course I emailed, Karen Kluba is the designer at Rosewood Manor. So I emailed them like, hey, listen, I'm working on tulips and I'm getting to the letters and there's no bottom to the letters. Like I looked at all the pages and I really looked like a bunch of times to think like, you know, maybe I'm dismissing it and not seeing it, but it really wasn't there. And it, 
that was yesterday and she got she got back to me within a couple of hours and she sent me pdfs to download the charts and she sent me the correction so i guess there was something with the printing of the chart i don't know if it was the first chart or whatever happened but she sent me the pdf right away so i thought that was awesome and amazing i didn't want to have to buy another chart or try and find it and you know i wouldn't have bought it online because i wouldn't have known it was correct but i was super happy that she sent it right away she's an awesome designer listen things happen that's you know things happen with designers and their charts it's just it was a little frustrating though i'm like where's the rest of the rest of the like i'm doing the tea for tulip and i like i couldn't do the bottom of it so i was like all right let me stop doing the letter let me go up top and work on the top and it's coming out awesome and great and I love the pattern. There is a lot of color changes in the pattern though. So there's a ton of uh, pattern changes. So colors and all that good stuff, but it's super pretty. I do like working on it, but I've been doing that and I've been doing this one um, like, a, like on lunch and in between, like I switch off a little bit. And then, like I said, a couple of days, I didn't even get to stitch because I'm out and about and doing other things uh, on that. Give me a second, I'll go get the piece and I'll give you a quick peek at what I've done so far. Give me one moment. Okay, so I had to take the top part out of the, um, the scroll frame. But as you can see, look at the collar. I did all in here and the tulips in. This is where I was starting the letters and I didn't have the bottom of the T to finish. But I do have it now, so I'll be able to uh, do that but look at how pretty that is look at the colors colors are awesome if you like bright spring colors it really is pretty let me take that down now isn't that so pretty oh uh, yeah tulips is coming along just fine i do like working on it it's a more intense stitch because you're changing a ton of colors so it's a little fiddly I call it fiddly <laughs> when you have to switch out a ton of colors um, doing just one color and not having to change is it goes so much faster but that's what gives the design the pop and the detail uh, in it so I do I do like stitching on it and it sometimes we need a challenge sometimes we don't and I'm seeing if I could show you this I'll go a little slower so you can see how I'm doing. The stitch in hand. When you're doing one color, it goes really, really fast. So that's slower, but it does go pretty quick when you stitch in hand. I can't stitch every project in hand, though. I don't know. I don't know. My brain. My brain just works different, I guess, than other people's brains. I could do like this piece I'll stitch in hand. I'm stitching spring at Hawkwind Hollow in my hand, but then other pieces like tulips, like I can't stitch that in hand. Like changing a, a color, like a ton of colors like I'm doing in tulips and st stitching in hand, I don't know, I, that would... I don't know, I guess it's not harder. I don't know, I just it seems like it would take so much longer. I don't know when you're switching colors when you're doing one color this goes super quick so I don't know that's just me I, I don't know my brain just I guess works different <laughs> we're all different <laughs> we all have a different style of what works for us and what doesn't work for us so just do what what you're good at and what your brain works that's uh, the best way I could describe it on Mother's Day I actually I stitched a project for someone else. It's a small piece, and I'm going to be finishing that. But I have to get supplies to finish it. I got some of them. Uh, there's just one other thing I have to get. I might go later on today. I'll see if I could get the supplies to finish it up. But I also, in my laundry room, I have pegboard. And it was on... It was trying to think it was it's by the door 
I don't know, the laundry room and my dining room were added on to the house. So the door to the laundry room used to be the outside door. And like on that wall, they had pegboard and they were hanging like, you know, you could hang like fly swatters and brooms and all that stuff. And I got back to the house in um, January, but I really, I haven't done anything. I don't know. It's hard, you know, I found that, you know, I was looking for a job, then I found a job, then I started a new job. But anyway, on Mother's Day, with the pegboard, because I wasn't really using it, there was only a couple things on it. I had to go buy more prongs, you know, for the pegboard. And believe it or not, I went to Lowe's, and Lowe's didn't have them, which I thought was weird. And of course, across the street was Walmart, and I don't like shopping at Walmart. I really don't. But I went in there, and of course they had them, so I picked them up. But the prongs for the pegboard were bigger than the holes in the pegboard. I'm like, what the heck is going on? But this pegboard definitely has been up there a long time. It's definitely older. So I had to drill, like, the holes a little bit bigger to use the pegboard, which is kind of funny. But I hung all of my uh, specialty threads in there, and they're all in name order. And that's how a lot of the stores do them. They do it in neem water. And I've seen it where they pat it on the pegboard, which it makes it easy to go in. And so I put everything in order. And they were taking up two drawers in my uh, storage cabinet. So they're all in neem order. And they're hanging there. And I love it. And it's awesome. And I have a ton of room on the pegboard still. And it makes it look like I have no specialty threads. And I really, I have a decent amount. But it makes it look like I have nothing. And it freed up two drawers in my, uh, where I store, you know, my DMC and linen and stuff. So I was like, oh, this is awesome. It made me feel like I have nothing. So... I'll include a picture of that, or maybe I'll do a small video for you, and I'll include that at the end of this video. I'll include it on my next video, because not everybody watches Sit and Stitch with me, but I'll include it here, and I'll include it in the next one. It's so cool. If you have any anywhere you could put up some pegboard, it is an awesome way to store your specialty threads. You know, your weak style works, classic color works, and things like that. I, I love it, and it so awesome. I could go and see if I have a color or not pretty quickly now. I know Vanna's got a storage system where she used file folders and she puts holes in them and stuff, but I already had the pegboard in my house. Like, it was there. I just had to buy a couple more pegs to hang them on. And um, whatever works for you, but I, I love it. I totally love it and it I didn't have to put it in or anything like that but if you have someone who's handy they could definitely uh, put in the pegboard pretty easily and I know a lot of you got some great husbands who are super handy with things like that it's awesome and like I said I'll include some of that oh, look at that I did that whole piece there uh, let's see what else am I going to do here color am I going to do now? Give me one second. I'm going to show you this. Look up. In the chart, as you can see, this star is in a lighter color. But the, this background is a lighter color too. I stitched that star first and then filled in the background and you could not see the star. So as you see, I had to do the star right here in a darker color to show up. I had to rip it out. You couldn't see it at all. And then this is the next part I want to do, and it's the same thing. It's the same color. So I think I'm going to do it in the same color. I think I'll just do it in, this is terrapin. Is that how you say it? Terrapin. I don't know, it's a darker color. That's the one I had to do the star in because I could not see the star. It, you couldn't even tell it was there. All you could see was the middle of it. So I think I'll do that. And then it gets blended in with the blue, which is dolphin. You have this color, and then there's another color blue. That is, what color is this? This is freedom. 
So I think that'll work. I think I'll just go with the darker color. It's strange that you have to, because sometimes on the dye lots, like these colors, you they're so alike. If you look at them, you could see the difference. But when it's on the linen, like it blended in. So I don't know. Like I'm, I think I'll just go, I don't know. Hmm, what should I do? <laughs> I don't want to have to rip anything out again because um, you couldn't see the star. I think I'm just going to go with the darker color. Okay, so I'm deciding to go with the darker color. Um, I just know I'm not going to have to rip anything out. I don't like ripping stuff out just like everybody else. And to rip out that star was hard because it was so blended in with the color of the color. I ha actually had to look at the chart to make sure I wasn't ripping out the wrong, the wrong threads. Uh, if that makes sense, but it was weird. Sometimes with the dye lots, it just it's not the same as different dye lots. You know, they come out differently. And when you buy the specialty threads. When there's dye lots involved, you don't know really what the color, I mean, for the most part, a lot of them are pretty on target, but some of them, I've seen colors look completely different. And when you're buying the specialty threads, if you're buying them online and you can't see them, you have no idea what you're going to get. Now, these I had bought purchase at the store, but I wasn't really comparing them when I bought it, and I guess that wasn't too smart, but I didn't think of it. I don't know. You just don't know until you start and do some projects like that. Um, it is what it is. It's When you're dealing with specialty threads, it's not always going to be the same. Those are dyed to, you know, variegation in them, and it's just different. Right? And I'm hoping that the dyers start opening back up because I... For Mother's Day, my kids got me gift certificates for 123stitch.com because it's the easiest place for me to get gift certificates in order. And I was purchasing things to kit up a pattern, and they were out of half of the specialty threads. You couldn't even get them. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. So I did get what I could, and I'm hoping that the dyers do open back up. I know... I think a lot of the colors were Weeks Dye Works. I don't know if they're still closed, if they're opening back up. I know a lot of the fabric dyers uh, were not doing it. So I don't know. It's I am glad I had a couple of kits already kitted up. and But there's a big piece that I want to do, and it's super pretty, and I'm excited uh, to share that on my next video. I actually got the delivery in the mail yesterday from 123 Stitch. They ship out really quick and um, down Sunshine Lane, I ordered the two patterns from them because they were the only ones who had them. Nobody at 123, none of them, none of the other sites had them because I checked a, a bunch of other places I wanted to purchase from first, but down Sunshine Lane had them. and I had that like in a day. She, she ships out super quick too. I've never had a problem with down Sunshine Lane. She does ship really quick. So, thank you kids for my gift certificates. I still have a bunch of gift certificates from Christmas too, but um, I got the linen I needed for my project and I got some of the specialty threads. I'm hoping Kim from Sassy Jacks opens soon. Because that's only an hour and a half from where I live. And I want to go so bad. She's in Weaverville, North Carolina. And Asheville is only like 20 minutes away. I love Asheville too. But I know everything is still shut down in that area. Um, but as soon as it opens up, I will be going. Um, I think everybody probably feels like I do. It, it's been a long time. It's been months. Well, since you really can go anywhere, you know, and actually do, and actually do something. I don't know, but I'm I'm excited to start those projects. Um, 
and I'll be sharing those patterns on my next video. They're, they're beautiful patterns, and I seen, I seen the samples at market, and that's what made me really think about them and really want to do them. They're huge patterns, though. They're huge, huge projects. They'll probably take me like ten years to do. <laughs> I. I just don't stitch as much as everybody else, but that's all right. It's a hobby for me. It's not, I don't do it 24 seven. I just can't I have other stuff I like to do, but it is a hobby and it'll be fun to start those projects and at least get them started. And we do a little at a time, just like every other project uh, that we do and work on. Um, a lot of good stuff out there there's definitely places I want to go and see and I'm, I can't wait to get back out there and be able to go places and do things I know so many of you feel just like I do I'm not the only one um, Mother's Day I mean I don't really my kids live in other states and they're far far away and I think I think it just bothered me more because they say, like, you can't go see and you can't go. When I'm told I can't do something, I guess it's like a kid. When you tell a kid that you can't do that, of course they're going to do it. So I guess kind of like that. When I'm told I can't do something, of course you want to do it. So I did miss seeing my kids. It was, a, um, it was a good day, though. I stitched, like I said, a project for someone else. I organized uh, all my flosses, got the pegboard, did that. I did go for my hike. I did get to stitch. It was just a very quiet day. And that is where I'm going to stop. I did all this. I did all this. And I finished the top of that. Uh, it's past 30 minutes. I like keeping them at 30 minutes because I know there's a ton of other people to watch. Um, I hope everybody has an awesome weekend. Do what you love and what makes you happy. Be safe out there. Enjoy yourself. And until we meet again, everyone, happy stitching. Okay, so this is uh, the wall in my laundry room where there's pegboard. And what I did is I hung all of my floss on the pegs. They're in neem water. So when I need something, I could just go. It's in neem water. And of course, I have like classic color works there. Got weeks works up there. And your gentle arts is here. It makes it look like I have nothing, but I mean, I have a decent amount. Nowhere near all of them, but that is how I'm storing those. And I, of course, I have a ton more room. I put a couple of clips here for the baggies. Uh, throw those on there. And then the other day I was working on a project and I didn't want to put it away. So I just threw it on here on a hook. But this is an awesome way... Uh, to store your floss. If you have anywhere that you could put a pegboard, you will love this. Happy stitching. Hi everybody. It's Cindy and I'm walking on the trail. A couple of people asked me to videotape some footage of me walking on the trail. And I'm only going to do it for a little bit. I don't want to make anyone dizzy. Uh, as you can see, there's no one on the trail, really. Very little people. It's beautiful out. It's in the high 70s today. It is May 14th. I hope everyone is doing well out there. Uh, it's a gorgeous, beautiful day to walk this trail. And this is my zen. Happy stitching, everyone. Hi, everybody. It's Cindy, and I'm walking on the trail. A couple of people asked me to videotape some footage of me walking on the trail. And I'm only going to do it for a little bit. I don't want to make anyone dizzy. Uh, as you can see, there's no one on the trail, really. Very little people. It's beautiful out. It's in the high 70s today. It is May 14th. I hope everyone is doing well out there. Uh, it's a gorgeous, beautiful day to walk this trail. And this is my zen. Happy stitching, everyone.